What's up guys, it's Zane here, and welcome to my PK Honor Ultimate Money Making Guide of 2016. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys some of the top ways, some of the most prestigious ways of making money on PK Honor. Most of these money making methods are incredibly easy with really easy requirements. And you know, the ones that have those higher requirements, guess what? You can use the low requirement money making methods to get to those high ones. It's perfect really easy to follow you're going to be making a lot of profit and whatever you want it's going to come to you maybe you just got cleaned or you got hacked or you want to get that custom with that donator that premium this guide is going to make you the money to get those items that you want so without further ado let's get started the table of contents this is a really cool thing in my personal opinion because right now you can actually pause the video and annotations will be on the screen for every single different way of making money. So for instance, let's say you know all the different ways of making money except for the Caliphate Queen. You can actually click on the word Caliphate Queen on your computer right now and it's going to send you to that part in the video in which I start talking about the Caliphate Queen. And the cool thing about this is you can always come back to the table of contents and click a new part. So maybe you know half of these, but you just want to go to the ones that you don't know. It makes it incredibly easy to do that. Probably in the description down below as well for you mobile users, I'm also going to have the times for all the other money making methods as well. So if you don't have annotations enabled, don't worry, check the description down below. Our first way of making money are kingly imps. These are not AFKable and I highly suggest not multi-logging. You're going to be constantly clicking on these kingly imps. The requirement for these kingly imps is 91 hunter. However, you know, it is a high level. However, the cool thing about hunter is it's almost completely free. You can probably get to 91 hunter with like 10 mil GP. So pretty much just do colon colon vote, get a couple mil GP and boom bada boom, you can get 91 hunter. With kingly implings, you're going to be making anywhere from 300 to 450 mil per hour. Now for the age old question, should you alk the kingly implings or should you open them? Well, I've asked my scientists in the background and they say that you should definitely alk the kingly implings. They alk for a whopping 1.2 mil GP per kingly impling. And on average, you're going to be making a ton more GP from actually just alking them than taking the chance and opening them. So definitely just alk them. That's going to be giving you a whopping, as I said before, 300 to 450 mil GP per hour. So if you're a new player or if you just got hacked or something like that, try to get 91 Hunter. Work towards 91 Hunter. I know it can be grueling, it can be boring. I know on my Iron Man personally, it's super boring. However, you can make a ton of GP off it. So I highly suggest checking it out. Next up, we have something a little bit simpler, rune bars. These are not AF cable and you cannot multi-log while doing these or you're going to get your profits plummeting down because you're going to be, as well as kingly impulings, you're going to be constantly clicking. Making rune bars gives you around 200 to 450 mil per hour, depending on how efficient and you know how much you're actually looking at the screen. The requirements for rune bars is 85 smithing. Now, there's currently actually four different ways to do smithing. You can either go to Follador, which I don't suggest. You can go to Skilling and then Smithing, which is fine. Uh, you can go to Colon Colon Smithing, which is also really good. And if you're a premium member, this is the best way to get your smithing level up. Uh, you can actually go and do smithing at the premium skilling zone. So this is going to be making you around 200 to 450 mil per hour. Obviously, it changes depending, as I said before, on how efficient you are and how close you are to the bank. So if you're a premium user, you're probably going to make around 25 more mil per hour because you're a little bit closer to the bank. Next up, we have Mahogany Planks. On screen right now, actually, you can actually click a annotation and it's going to send you on over to my money making method for Mahogany Planks. I made a whole entire separate video for this. However, I'm going to give you the quick rundown. To make Mahogany Planks, you either need to have your own house with a workbench, which is highly preferable because they're really cheap and you can have your butler right there. Or you can go to Sears Village and run from the bank to the west and just back and forth and back and forth and do it that way. 
Now the requirements for this are at least 500 mil GPI, I'd say just because it does cost a lot of money to make them into planks. And I also suggest having 77 construction for the best workbench because that's going to give you the most profit. Uh, now, if you do want to make a ton of profit, you can actually cut the mahogany logs yourself. However, if you're a little lazy, you can also buy the mahogany logs off other players via trade or just off the GE. Next up, we have the gold bar slash leaf method. Now, you cannot AFK with this method. You're going to be constantly clicking. However, you can multi-log. You can go do another uh, money-making method on another account while doing this, or you can actually do the same money-making method. Uh, I've actually done that quite a bit. The requirements for this is 40 mining and GP if you are making the leaves and also access the crafting guild if you're making the leaves. Even if you're not though, you still have access to the crafting guild. This is going to make you around 200 to 300 mil per hour and that's actually really good since you only need around 40 mining. So that's tremendous. So the way you do this pretty much is you go to the crafting guild, you get your pickaxe out, you mine some gold, you turn it into gold bars, you talk to that little gnome, and for 150k per gold bar, he'll make it into a gold leaf. A gold leaf is used for construction. It's actually one of the best ways to get your construction level up, so there's constantly players buying them. Just check the GE and try to make a profit off it. I generally try to get at least 100k profit per gold leaf, and uh, yeah, you're going to be making around 200 to 300 mil per hour. Next up, we have red chin chompas. Lots of people say this is a horrible way of making money. And yes, it's only 100 to 250 mil per hour. However, if you're bored of implings or you just want a little bit of a change, check out red chin chompas. It's a lot of clicking, but it is a nice change. These are not AFKable, nor are they multi-loggable because you're going to be constantly clicking. The requirements for this is 63 Hunter. However, I highly suggest having the Hunter level for 5 traps as that's going to make it a lot faster. It's pretty simple. You just go to the hunting um, skilling teleport and then you pick on the jungle impling area. And then you run on over to where the chinchampas are. You start putting down your traps however you want. They go in the trap, you click on the trap, you get a red chinchampa. Then you can actually sell them to the junk store for around 130k each. This is going to make you anywhere from 100 to 250 mil per hour. The reason it varies so much is because you really need to be efficient at looking at your screen at all times because you're really going to be constantly clicking. Next up, we have rune crafting. This is not AFKable and you cannot multi-log with this method. Uh, the money making varies per hour depending on what is going on in the GE. If people are buying them for a high price, you know, the runes, then obviously you're going to make more profit. And if they're buying them for a lower price, you're going to make a lower profit. However, there's almost always a way to make a pretty decent amount of money off rune crafting just by using the GE. I actually have a guide on this, so you can actually click the annotation on the screen right now, and it's going to send you to the rune crafting guide. I explain it really well. You're going to know how to do it, what to check for, prices, all kinds of things, charts, and that's about it. Next up is overloads. This money making method is not AF cable and you can also not multi log with them. But this is a tremendous way of making money, especially if you can focus. If he can't focus, then this might not be the money making method for you. You can make anywhere from 250 to 2.5 bill per hour, depending on what supplies you already have. If you already have all your extreme setup, if you have your torso setup, you can make upwards of 2 to 2.5 bill per hour. However, if you need to make the supers yourself, if you need to make the extremes yourself, all that kind of stuff, then you're going to be making more like 250 to 450 mil per hour, which is still a great amount of cash. However, it's nowhere near 2 to 2.5 bill per hour. Now, the requirements for this are 99 herb lore, and what you don't see here is I actually suggest 99 farming as well. What this is actually going to do is it's going to allow you to get the, all those herbs that you need because most players actually sell those high level herbs for really high prices or they don't sell them at all. So get your farming level up and just get your own herbs. It's really quick, it's really easy. You can get like a thousand of any herb in like 10 minutes flat. So just get the herbs yourself, make the overloads, and sell them for anywhere from 1.5 to 3 mil per overload.
Next up, we have diamond bolt tips. This can make anywhere from 150 to 250 mil per hour. Now you might be saying, Ain, this method doesn't work anymore. However, people are still constantly buying diamond bolt tips at the GE. So before you start cutting these diamond bolt tips and whatnot, actually check the GE, make sure that people are actually buying diamond bolt tips for a profitable amount. Do the math, it's really easy. Get yourself a calculator, get your calculator out on your computer and do a little bit of math. This method is not really AFKable nor multi-logable. I mean, you could, I guess, you know, log into multiple accounts, but it's going to make it a little bit less efficient. The only requirement for making diamond bolt tips is 43 crafting and a tiny, tiny bit of GP. We're talking like 10 mil and you're fine. So pretty much the starting amount that you get as a new player. So this is an awesome way of making money as a new player. It's going to get you anywhere from 150 to 250 mil per hour, which is a great amount of cash, to be honest, for a new player. That can get you a whip, a DFS, uh, some Barrows armor. So if you are a new player, boom, bada, boom. Do this. Easy mode. Vote. There you go. Next up, we have one of my favorite ways of making money, the Frost Dragons. These are AF cable and you can multi-log in them. What I personally like to do is I like to multi-log on multiple premium accounts at Frost Dragons. That means that you're making a ton of GP profit. However, the requirements to get to Frost Dragons are a little high. You need to have premium, 50 construction, and 200 mil cash to make the portals to get to Frost Dragons. But when you get to Frost Dragons, you're going to be good to go. You're going to be making so much GP per hour. You're going to be making anywhere from 500 to 700 mil per hour. My gear suggestion is void. Get some void, get an anti-fire potion and a DFS with a whip or whatever weapon you have, and they will be hitting zeros on you. Protect melee, get some prayer potions, boom, bada, boom. They'll be hitting zeros on you. You're going to be getting those bones. Nowadays, the frost dragons actually also drop noted frost dragon bones. So you're going to be making a ton of GP profit. And nowadays, people are buying bones for like 3 mil each. So get on that. Enjoy that. Enjoy that profit. Next up, we have one of my favorite ways to make money, Slayer. Now, Slayer is incredibly hard to pretty much explain how you make money off it. So I'm going to be very simplistic. The money you make per hour varies. Sometimes you will make literally nothing. You might even lose money because of the prayer potions and the other potions that you're using. This method is generally not AF cable, but really it just depends on what task you actually get. The requirements to do Slayer is GP for gear and supplies. So, you know, have some Ceridolin Bruce, have some prayer potions, have Barrows or Void or Whip, something like that. Do some of the money-making methods that I talked about before, like Diamond Bolt Tips, for instance. I highly suggest doing Elite Tasks or Hard Tasks. I'm actually leaning towards Elite Tasks more because you're going to be getting a lot of bosses. What's awesome about this is you're never going to get burnt out. You know, you kill 10 Zami bosses, then you go kill 10 Corp or 10 Dagonoff Kings. So you're really mixing it up and you're never really going to get burnt out on killing one boss, you know, a hundred thousand times because you're switching it up. It's a new boss every single time. And it's a great and fun way of making some GP. Next up, we have Black Dragons. These are not AFKable, but you can multi-log on them. The requirements are a dragon fire shield and an anti-fire potion and some decent gear, you know, some barrows or void or whatever you have. No, 100 mil made from bones and hides with a chance at a draconic visage. So you're going to be making 100 mil per hour if you sell the bones and the hides. And on top of that, you have a chance of getting a draconic visage. So this is a great way not only to get prayer XP if you don't have it, but also to make a little bit of GP as well. So why not do it? You're going to be getting a ton of bones per hour. That doesn't even include that 100 mil right there doesn't even include the noted bones. It's probably closer to 120 to maybe 200 mil per hour if you include the noted bones, which is a big part of it. So this is a fantastic way of making money, especially for new players. So definitely go check out Black Dragons, sell the Black Dragon Hide, sell the bones, and if you get a Draconic Visage, sell that too. Turn it into a DFS, have someone else turn it into a DFS for you, and then sell it for a profit. Great way for new players to make money. Next up, we have Mithril Dragons. This is a step above the Black Dragons, but really it varies. 
Sometimes you can actually make less money off Mithril Dragons than you can Black Dragons because they don't drop any hides. It's the same exact requirements for Black Dragons and Frost Dragons pretty much, as in you need a Dragon Fire Shield, you need an Anti-Fire Potion, and you need some decent gear like Void or Barrows or something like that. You know, Rune will work too, but you know, get some decent gear so you deal a little bit of damage. Now you'll make anywhere from 100 mil to 1 mil per hour. Sometimes all you'll be getting is bones, but every once in a while you'll get an elite clue scroll, which can, when finished and you get that casket, that casket can actually be sold for around 1 bill GP. So it's a little bit of a game of chance. You're not going to be making as much money as you would be over at Black Dragons, but you know, as I said before, you're taking that chance at that 1 bill GP. Next up, we have Barrows specifically risky barrows this is not afkable but you can multi-log if you want requirements for this is magic gear specifically blood barrage and a dwarf cannon if you're doing it solo i highly suggest doing this with a couple friends maybe some people from a clan you can make a ton of gp off this this is actually how i made most of my money off my iron man all i did was blood barrage them and then alk the gear i think i made three maybe four bill just by alking the gear just on my Iron Man. If I actually sold that gear in the GE, if I wasn't an Iron Man, I probably would have made anywhere from five to six bill GP. Also on screen right now, you can actually click onto my loot from 500 Barrows Brothers from Risky Barrows, and you'll see that I made a ton of GP off that as well. I actually talk about it a little bit more in depthly as well. So uh, check that out, click that annotation if that interests you as well. Next up, we have the Elves. This is a fantastic way to make money. It's AFKable, you can multi-log, and the only requirement is Pest Invasion Quest. So this is a great way for players that have either been hacked or are cleaned to make money. If you make an account, strive to get Pest Invasion done, because the cool thing about this is if you're ever hacked, the hacker can't take this quest away from you. If you're ever cleaned, you can never stake your pest invasion quest away. So you're always going to have this really good way of making money. And the gear you need is minimal. You can use a dragon scimitar and rune and still make decent gear. The way you make money is simply by, by alking the crystal shield and the crystal bow. This can make you anywhere from 100 to 500 mil per hour. And it's a great way to make that money back. Next on the chopping block is Armadillo. This method is not AFKable, but if you are capable, you can multi-log. The money make per hour varies because you can go dry and go 10 hours and only get an Armadillo helmet like me, and then you can go on a random trip on your Iron Man and get an Armadillo hilt like I did. Now, the requirements are very minor. All you need are 43 prayer and 70 range to get in there and protect yourself. However, I suggest having at least mail, or, uh, range void, kurils, that type of thing. You can do it with black dehyde, rune crossbow, that kind of uh, thing as well. However, it can be difficult. On screen right now, I'm going to have a video. It's going to link you to actually two different videos. Uh, you can do either one. You can click right now to either video that interests you. One is a loop from 10 hours of Armadillo, and the other one is an old guide to doing Armadillo as well. It has a little bit of tips and a couple of guides on gearing and whatnot. And even though it's a little old, it still works very well. Bandos is next. Bandos is not AFKable, but you can multi-log and do other things. The prices you make per hour vary, as always, because you could go 10 hours dry and then get that lucky loot on a random trip. The requirements to go to Bandos are as followed. 43 prayer, 70 strength, and a hammer. For the gear, I suggest having basic melee gear, such as, you know, barrows or melee void perhaps bring a couple friends with you if you don't have very much gp uh, for instance if you are using melee void maybe bring three or two friends that also are using melee void as well it's going to make your trips a lot quicker and it's going to make the chance of you dying diminish dramatically bandos is a great way to make gp though a lot of people go there however so it's often popular so just be aware of that 
Next up is my boy Zamorak. Zamorak is not AFK -able, but like most of the God Forest dungeon bosses, you can multi log. The amount you get per hour varies as always because you can go dry for 10 hours and then get really lucky and get like five drops in one run. The requirements for this are as followed 43 prayer and 70 agility. However, for soft requirements, I highly suggest having some decent gear. Having something like Pharaohs or Melee Void with a whip and a DFS can help tremendously compared to having, you know, Rune and things of that nature. So if you're a totally new player and you just got like a Zamorak task, I highly suggest getting some better gear first. Go to Void, go to Risky Barrows, do that, get some GP, vote, and just get a little bit of wealth before you go to God of War's Dungeon. Zamorak is great though because it actually got recently updated and it now drops the Zamorak Hasta, which sells for a pretty decent profit. Not only that, but it also drops the Zamorak Spear. So you have a really good chance of making some pretty decent GP at Zamorak, and it definitely is a competitor compared to Bandos and Armadil. You can make the same amount of money that you would at Armadil and Bandos at Zamorak. Saradomen, not so much. That's why Saradomen won't be in this ultimate money-making guide. Next up, we have the ever-so-popular Dagonoff Kings. The Dagonoff Kings are not afk -able. They're actually pretty dangerous, especially for new players. However, you can multi-log while fighting these, especially if you have pretty decent gear. As always with most bosses, the price that you get per hour in GP varies because, well, you could go dry as always, or you could get a bunch of drops. Now, the requirements for these are 43 prayer, decent gear like Void or Barrows, maybe a couple friends as well, and 20 achievement points. I'm actually planning on making a quick little achievement point guide going through each achievement really, really quickly just so for new players, they can quickly watch a video and figure out exactly what they need to do. However, most of the things for achievements are pretty simple to do, and I feel that most players would have no trouble getting those 20 achievement points. Dagonoff Kings are a great way to make money because they drop a lot of little things like rings, Robin Hood hats, things of that nature, and it can really add up quite quickly. Next up, we got the Big Mama, the Caliphate Queen herself. The Caliphate Queen is not AF cable, however, you can multi log if you watch yourself carefully. The money you make per hour varies. The requirements are 43 prayer, decent gear or friends, and 26 achievement points. The Caliphate Queen is actually pretty easy to kill, uh, especially if you have a Karis, which you can get from your construction house. I believe you can get it from your combat room. If you have the maxed out shop in your combat room, you can get the Karis for around 30 mil. This is a tremendously helpful item as it makes it so you don't actually have to switch to range gear. It actually goes through the melee protection on the Caliphate Queen's second form. The Caliphate Queen is a tremendous way to make money and really efficient as it drops the Rigor, Augury, Scrolls, and the Dragon Defender. All these items are really bought out a lot by players, so you can make a ton of GP off Caliphate Queen. Actually Moving getting on access, to the Kraken. Access to the, the Kraken is not it is kind of annoying to get here, though. And while you can multi-log while fighting now, the Kraken, the inventory setup, this is obviously interchangeable. As always, the amount you are as a player will kind of keep your using. Varies. Obviously, the cheaper the you're going to have, the less defense you have, the more serotonin brews you're going to want to bring. But there are a few things that you just have to bring, including overloads. These are really going to make your kills a lot more efficient. Going to want to watch yourself because blood barrages and blitzes or ice barrages. Those are really going to make your kills a lot more efficient, including overloads. These are really going to make your kills a lot more efficient, including overloads. These are really going to make your kills a lot more efficient, including overloads. These are really going to make your kills a lot more efficient, including overloads. These are really going to make your Iron Man on her and points, she is be it really, super really hard. Super prayer, it's easy uh, when you have potions, whatnot, super restores, or prayer Aram, potions, and then some type of food difficult. like serotonin brews or regular. Now, if you are an Iron Man, you prayer, are going to need 95 agility to actually all get for magic damage Kraken, and defense. You can and get to actually the kill the Kraken or other players. As if you don't task, have Augury and you don't want to buy it or go to KQ, you can also use Mystic Might. The Kraken is a decent way to make money as it drops the tentacle and I want to get this guide out to you really quickly because I have had a lot of people actually asking me one to two bill GP I'll add an annotation on screen That's right now how you're to tell you about the soul split once you've actually money from the Kraken. It's a now, good way to make money. And I have some people asking about the different amulets and which amulet they should use. Um, Obviously, you know, if you're a new player, you should use a Curie or a Third Age amulet. They're both cheap and have really good bonuses. One of the harder ways to make money on here is Nex. Nex is not AFKable. However, if you do have a lot of friends with you, it 
really quickly becomes AFKable. You can multi log while playing and fighting Nex. Actually, when I was fighting Nex earlier today on Ain, I was actually on my Iron Man doing Herblore as well. The money that you make per hour for Nex really varies more than most monsters actually because the drops are so rare. However, if you do get a drop, it can cost anywhere from two bill to 15 bill if you get like a tour of a plate body. So it really does vary and the averages are hard to calculate. The requirements for doing Nex is the last journey, uh, per Nex armor or friends. What I mean by this is if you're going to solo Nex, you're going to want around per Nex armor level stuff or you're going to want two friends, maybe one friend. You're also going to want to bring super anti-poison and 43 prayer. Obviously bring food and things like that, but these are the main requirements. Nex is really easy to kill. All you need to do is attack Nex when she says, you know, Umbra protect me, kill that minion, kill each minion that she tells to protect her. And then once all the minions die, she'll go into this fury mode where she deals a little bit more damage. She calls down lightning, etc. And then when she finally dies, you want to run away from her body because she'll do a big wrath uh, smite pretty much. So you want to run away from that uh, because it will deal a little bit of damage and then just hope for a good drop. But other than that, she's pretty easy to kill, but the requirements can be pretty annoying because the last journey quest is pretty annoying for new players to actually finish. And last but not least, probably harder than Nex itself is the Corporal Beast. The Corporal Beast is not AFKable, and I highly suggest not multi-logging while actually fighting the Corporal Beast. The reason the Corporal Beast is such a problem is because it can hit 50s on you. It can hit two 50s in a row, and then hit another 30, and then you're dead. And if you lag at Corporal Beast, you better hope to the gods that she or he, whatever the Corporal Beast is, hit some zeros instead of those 50s because if those 50s happen boom you're dead so the requirements are premium you need to be a premium to actually go to the corporal beast you need to have 43 prayer you need to have decent gear as well now on my iron man i have like a bandos chest plate or like band i have bandos to sets derok plate body rapier uh neat you know dragon full hell or not dragon full helm dragon boots Fury, that kind of stuff. Very basic gear. Um, you could probably do Corporal Beast actually in Barrows. However, the lower level gear you go, the harder she's actually going to hit you. So if you have really low gear, she's going to hit you in the 60s. So you want to have, you know, Barrows, maybe some Bandos, things like that, because then her max will only be around 50. So be careful about that. Get some good gear. Definitely have 99 hit points. If you don't have 99 hit points, don't go to Corporal Beast because she will wreck you. The money you're going to make per hour from Corporal Beast varies as always. You can make four bill here or you could go dry for literally a thousand kills. But that's it for Corporal Beast. So I just wanted to throw a quick little disclaimer out there. Uh, at the moment, I haven't actually slept for about 40 hours. So I'm running on fumes right now while I made this guide. Uh, and I made this guide pretty much this whole entire time and I commentated over it. So if I repeat myself, um, if I'm not talking normally, if I'm stumbling over words, if I'm not commentating like I normally do, then I'm sorry. Uh, I haven't slept in 40 hours, so obviously not everything's going to be pitch perfect. But at least be happy that you finally got that money making guide that, that you guys have always been asking for for so long. So hope you enjoy. Hope you enjoyed, depending on where I put this in the video. Peace.